shift. But what I can say is that absolutely, um, we do see that travelers, and again, leisure travelers, we are a leisure focused business, really do want to travel. Absolutely. And they are traveling. You know, again, I said um, that we are above our pre pandemic levels, and that only shows proof that there really is a real desire to travel and people are absolutely coming out to travel for the summer. And especially after a, such a dire year uh, put behind us, people do want to travel and have those great memories of the holidays. Danny, can I ask you about the spending patterns that you're witnessing? Because economists have noted the pent up savings that are on the back of this pandemic, money that has not been spent, that households have saved. But uh, I think for anyone who's booking a trip right now, they can see that prices have gone up if they've left to the last minute in particular. Prices for the airlines, for the accommodation are up, uh, not to mention all the extra money that needs to be allocated for COVID tests, for car rental that's more expensive because of the chip shortage. What are you seeing in the amounts that people are prepared to spend now? And what do you think it's going to look like down the track when some of those savings are depleted, even off the back of one trip? Um, well, for, first of all, in terms of the actual costs of trips, they are actually down if I compare to pre-pandemic levels 2019. It's absolutely to say that if you compare them to, let's say, last summer, they're absolutely are up. Because last summer, again, we were in the real deep, deep days of the pandemic. And so absolutely, there was hardly anybody flying and therefore the prices were at absolutely rock bottom. But when you compare them to 2019 levels, the prices are still lower and they're definitely more attractive for people. Now, there are the odd stories of rental car companies, absolutely. And we've heard of the ones of the stories in the States where there is absolutely a real um, lack of supply of rental cars. And so prices have gone up. But for generally within Europe, within airfares, within hotel and lodgings, um, the prices are absolutely lower than the pre-pandemic levels. Just one more for me. How much more of this can the European travel industry take as well? Because it's stop start nature of things as well. I, I, and I note your optimism about the trajectory of vaccines opening up far more travel mm -hmm. as well. But we're already hearing the Delta variant is running rife in certain countries, uh, certainly appears to be in the United Kingdom as well, and is threatening the opening up of international travel. Financially, how much more of this can the sector take? Well, it depends upon by company. I mean, again, if you look at us, you know, we're above the pre-pandemic levels. So it, it's difficult to say. I mean, we are absolutely geared in order to help consumers and to help consumers travel. And so we feel very comfortable and confident that our best days are absolutely ahead of us. Now, you raise a good point about the Delta variant. And you're absolutely right that there are will be things, you know, coming up over time still um, with a pandemic. That's absolutely the case. At the same time, I just really have to say that all of the prognosis from the early days of the pandemic, no one ever said that we would have a vaccine out within nine months. You know, all of the predictions were two years to even five years. And we had one out within nine months. And then again, all the therapeutics, the, the drugs to be able to minimize the very dire consequences of um, catching COVID, again, are way, way ahead of what anybody ever predicted. And so while there will be some steps, you know, um, setting us back, there absolutely be steps going forward. 